there has been a handful of water-cooled laptops every now and then. For example, the ASUS GX700 from 2015 with its massive docking station which integrated the water cooling loop. And there are also newer, more modern solutions with an external portable water cooling device as seen with the XMG Neo and Core laptops from 2022. Using water cooling, they managed to drop the temperatures by up to 20 degrees C compared to traditional air cooling. On top of that, the fans spawn also quieter and the performance rises a little because the temperatures are further away from their thermal throttling thresholds. Those improvements sound so good that you can easily think of a ton of laptops which could really use water cooling. Just like in my example. I got an XMG Apex Max, a laptop with an AMD Zen 3 desktop CPU inside, which runs on comfortable temperatures using a 6-core 5600X, but can suffer from thermal throttling with a 16-core 5950X, for example. Oh, and I bet you have heard from the hottest Zen 3 CPU out there, the 5800X 3D. Because of its stacked V-cache and extra silicon on top of the cores, it runs so hot that even on well-cooled desktop systems, it can reach its thermal limit of 90 degrees centigrade. And besides the high temperatures, the fans do run quite loud in this laptop too. So what if this laptop would have come out with XMG Oasis water cooling support? Would we see a 20 centigrade temperature drop too? By how much the performance would be improved? Would the fans be quieter? And how far could we push the system using overclocking and the shunt mod? Let's find out in my new project do-it-yourself laptop water cooling. Since this is the first of multiple videos, let's start easy. And okay, maybe also a little boring, but don't worry, we will jump right into the action in the next video. To build my own water cooling solution for this laptop, I will obviously need to mod the heatsink and solder on some kind of water pipe the water can flow to. So I thought, before we try anything custom built, let's make use of an existing system first. So I called for help at XMG and they sent me a replacement heatsink for the XMG Neo 15, which integrates a water pipe right on top of the heat pipes. To extract the water pipe from the heatsink, I have to desolder it. Just like the heat pipes, the water pipe is soldered on with low temperature solder, which melts at just above 130 degrees centigrade. So let's remove the fans and start to heat it up on my trusty hot plate. We are working in a narrow temperature range. We want to reach a little more than 130 degrees centigrade, but at just above 150 the heat pipes can swell and break. So if you want to keep or reuse them, be careful. As always, I can recommend to use a thermocouple and constantly check the temperature if you don't want to damage the components. After the total destruction of the heatsink, um, yeah, I saved most of the components for future projects and cleaned up the water pipe afterwards using a copper wick. The goal was to get rid of most of the solder blobs for a better test fit. Now looking at my possibilities to solder the water pipe onto the heatsink, I soon realized that I got two usable options, but both of them were far from perfect. Number one with the black painted part on top, had the advantage that it had potentially the most contact area to the original heatsink, but it comes with a trade-off that the ends of the water pipe would stick out of the laptop by a lot. 
because the water pipe got an uplift bend close to its ends. And probably the most problematic thing, it would make the HDMI and USB-C port pretty unusable. The other way around, however, the water pipe's ends would be in a lot more useful position. But it would also make a lot less contact to the heatsink after all. Plus, I would have to solder in a quite big copper block to make any contact to the GPU, which is not good for the thermal transfer and additionally it's a little harder to pull off, because the GPU is not on the same height level as the CPU is. Whatever I choose, the outcome would be far from perfect. So I quickly realized that I want to try to create my own water pipe, but this will be the topic for another video. What do you think is the best option? Let me know in the comments. I have decided for myself already and will let you know in the next part, in which I will solder the water pipe onto the Apex heatsink and of course we will also test it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!